Hi everyone, John Dickinson from Motionworks.net here, back with another Cinema 4D tutorial for you. Still working on this model. In the last couple of tutorials, we looked at how to sharpen this section here, and after that, we looked at how to use uh, a loft object to create this sort of connecting section here. And I've moved on since then, was working on this just this morning, and I'm thinking this is some kind of sci-fi chamber, uh, container, and uh, I want this here to have a window because I want to be able to see some kind of liquid inside or gas or something like that. And I've taken this top section, basically it's just a duplicate of, where are we, let's just see, I'm just going to uh, hide that for a moment. And come back to this guy here. So this is the lower section here. I've just duplicated that and flipped it. And that's what I've used to create this top chamber section. You can see the geometry is the same. It's just being flipped. And then I've just grabbed these points here and just extended them up to this point here. And then I've duplicated that and flipped that and joined it all together. So that's given me this chamber. And I want to cut a window in here. And you can see it actually does have some depth in there and I'm going to have to deal with that when I cut in the window. So let's take a look at how you might want to approach this. This is just one way of approaching it. Obviously if you look at this and you can see a better way of approaching it, I'm all ears because uh, I'm still learning here. So first thing to do when I see something like this is think how can I put this in symmetry and I probably can. So what I'll do is I'll just keep it selected and use HB solo just to solo that and think about getting this in symmetry. So the best way to do that is to go into front view and just be in point mode. And I might do it sideways first actually. So I want to be in right view and I want to delete half. So just come down here, select half and delete. Okay, and I want to drop that into a symmetry object. Just check which way we want this, probably X, Z, there we go. Okay, so that's half. Now we want to do it the other way. We want to do it this way as well. So I uh, might not have this in the right order, let's see. So if I come into here and split this this way, we'll just delete these points. Okay, that gives us that. And now with that symmetry selected, I'll click on symmetry and there we go. So that's working pretty well. So now all I have to deal with is just one section. Now the top of the opening here is going to be the same as the bottom, so they're going to be identical. So we can probably drop that in, into another symmetry as well. Wow, three layers of symmetry. Let's see, so... I'm going to delete the... Well, should we do it the top or the bottom? Let's just delete the bottom. Like that. You can see there's that thickness I was talking about. And now we want to drop that into another symmetry. First of all, Let's just select that symmetry there and you can see the axis is in the center of that. We want to have it down the bottom. So I'm just going to go into front view and just make sure I snap to um, axis snap using HB axis snap and then just bring that down and I'll just zoom in a little bit, snap that down. Maybe edge snap, let's try that. No axis snap, it should snap in. There we go. Okay, so now with that selected, if I hold the Alt key down and drop that into another symmetry and choose XY, there you go, that's going to give me a third layer of symmetry. And you can see it's not quite selected, so that axis wasn't quite in the right position. What you can do though is with symmetry selected, just increase the tolerance. So if I increase that to 0.5, that's just going to close that up. Okay, so 
there we go. So we've got just one small piece of geometry to work with, which is going to make it a lot easier. So now I've got to think about cutting in the window. So I might just hide these for now and go into polygon mode. And I want to have the window about about that big because I want to have this. This is metal. This section here is going to be metal. And it's going to be the same on the back. There and there. Now I actually need to cut in some control cuts, which will make my life a little bit easier later on. So let's see. I want to. I think I want to go into ring into edge mode, sorry, and press UB for ring select. MM to connect the points and edges. Same on this side, MM. Okay, so this should be in exactly the same position on the Y axis. So let's just select both of these. And I want to move those up. So I'm going to just slide those up. And I might just turn these back on for a second so I can see how big this is going to be. I don't want my window to be too tall. Maybe something like that. I can always adjust that later. Okay, so now I need to add in a couple more loops. So just turn these off again. And if I use the slide tool and I hold down control, I can slide that down. I want to create a square here, keep that nice and even. Okay. And I'll do one more down about there. And I also want one above. So there and there. And oh, that's interesting. When I slide up, that can be a problem. You can see it goes in the reverse direction. If anybody knows a way around that, I'm all ears. What I can do though is just do it on one side and then select the other side come into front view that's the one I want to line it up with so I want to click on HB edge snap and then just control drag that up I'm going to come back to this view just to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Now I've grabbed the wrong one. Let's just undo that. I do want to control drag it. And now I want to snap that in place. Okay. So now we know that they're all in exactly the right position on both sides. And if I go back to symmetry, you can see we've got all the cuts at the bottom as well. All right, so now I want to start cutting some stuff out. I go into polygon mode. I might just turn these off again. And I want to come in here and select these polygons. Like that. Same on the other side. Make sure I leave three rows like that. Okay, now I want to split these off. So UP, because this is going to be my window, and delete. So now we've got the window and the chamber itself. going to turn off the window like that. 
Okay, so now I want to connect this with this. I'm going to try and use stitch and sew for this. There we go, so holding down shift. You can see that's created some end gons, but if I press UE, that'll convert those end gons into edges. So that's looking good. Let's just have a look with the symmetry turned back on. Okay, so now you're starting to get the idea. Let's turn our window back on. Okay, I'm just going to turn the chamber off because this also needs to be connected. So I should be able to do it exactly the same way. Double click to select the edges. Just zoom in a bit. Stitch and sew. Shift. Ah, it doesn't always work. There we go, that worked much better, didn't it? If it doesn't work, just try it from a different point. Generally, it seems to work. UE, good idea to check the polygons to see if the normals have been reversed. So just going to, yeah, you can see they have been reversed. Stitch and Sew tends to do that. So what I want to do is I want to align the normals. So U and it's UA, the very top one there. Okay, so aligning the normals, really important. Let's also check this one as well. We've probably got some problems here too. Turn this guy off. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, now if I drop that into a subdivision surface over here, Let's see how that curvature is. It's not bad, but it needs to be just tightened up a little bit. You can see it's very rounded. Not too bad though. So just press Q to deactivate that. And let's see, just get rid of all of these symmetry objects. And the window. So I need to tighten up this corner. Because at the moment, I don't know, I kind of like it rounded like that. I don't want to make it too, too straight. So I think that's fine, but it definitely can't be rounded like that. So we need to add a couple of control cuts. So the quickest way to do that would be to go into edge mode and just do that. And that should be enough. Let's just press Q again. Yeah, you can see that's nice and sharp now. Not too sharp. You don't want every single bevel to be ultra sharp. It really depends on the model that you're creating. If you're creating something a little bit older, maybe the bevels are a little more weathered. If you're creating something you know, very new, maybe they're very sharp. Once again, let's just turn on the symmetry objects and take a look at that. Ah, very nice. And see, symmetry does all of the work. That's a really, it looks really complex, but you know, you haven't had to do very much at all. Come back to the window. Might just name this. Window. It's important not to be lazy with your naming, especially when you start to get a lot of objects in your scene. So this needs to be sharpened as well. So I'll just turn off this guy and need to come in and sharpen these. So it's great that they're still selected. Come into the bevel tool. And notice how having the subdivision surface active and adding the bevel allows me to preview the bevel rather than turning it on and off. So it looks pretty good. So once again, just turn this one back on. And they should be super snug. Yeah, that looks great. So 
why don't I just make a quick material. Obviously, I'm going to um, texture this inside of Substance Painter. As I mentioned in the previous tutorial, I'll just make a, make a quick material. So I'll just, uh, let's see, duplicate that one. And just turn on transparency. I'm just going to see how this looks. Transparency, uh, maybe I have to just muck around with the refraction. This is ultra rough, obviously. And don't want it overly transparent. Something like that. And uh, just drop that onto the window. Uh huh. There's no lights in the scene. There's nothing to uh, to reflect, but that's going to look really nice. I do have a problem down on the inside here, though, because you can see where I've I've got these overhanging edges because I originally didn't think I was going to be able to see them. So I'm going to have to fill those to make it look like you know actual proper finished geometry. And why aren't we seeing the window at the back? That's because we need to drop the window and the chamber into a null. So option group, there we are. And now we're seeing both. So this is really coming together. Let's just turn on everything else. So come out of solo mode. This is really fun. I didn't do any pictures for this. It's just flying by the seat of my pants, making one section at a time and designing that based on what I did with the previous section. So. What I'll probably do is um, duplicate this section here and add that up to the top. And uh, I'll add a few more little bits and pieces. I want to take this into Substance Painter and add a bunch of um, you know hard surface details using the, the normal, uh, normal brushes in Substance Painter. I've been watching a few tutorials on that and uh, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. The new version 2.0, uh, sorry, 2017.2 for Substance Painter was just announced today and that's got the new um, anchor point feature, which uh, which allows you to add, uh, you know, normal detail and height detail, um, which you've always been able to do. But if you wanted that to be recognized by the normal map, you had to bake that in and then re, um, re-bake all of your maps. But this new anchor point feature allows you to do it on the fly without having to do that. So I'd like to add a bunch of little techie bits and pieces to this inside of Substance Painter and, uh, and uh, see how it comes out. Okay, so here's a quick render. You can see we're getting a really nice result. We've got this bevel here on the edges picking up the light, and that's going to look fantastic when it's textured. So that's it for now. As I keep moving along with this, I'll see if I can find other things that I can share with you. But for now, this is John from motionworks.net. Have fun, be creative, and keep modeling.